in debt? A hundred and twenty thousand dollars? What? So that was my bank and they said I am minus a hundred and twenty thousand dollars and I thought I had all this money and I was just having such a good time. So what does that have to do with rational numbers? Well, in fact, money has everything to do with rational numbers. In Canada, we have a $1 coin, which is called the loony. In the US, it's just a bill. We used to have bills in Canada and not anymore. A quarter, which is one fourth of a dollar. One dime is one tenth of a dollar. So that's kind of like a fraction. Well, let's talk about these rational numbers. You've seen this before. And the real numbers are divided into groups. Now we've talked about natural numbers and natural numbers are also known as counting numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on up to infinity. And whole numbers, the natural numbers are contained within the whole number set. The only difference is that whole numbers also includes the zero. What about integers? Well, integers have negative numbers plus the zero plus all the positive numbers. So if a number is a natural number, it's also a whole number and it's also an integer. If a number is a whole number, it's not a natural number. Well, it could be, but if it has a zero, then it's just a whole number and it's also an integer. If it's an integer and it's negative, then it goes, it belongs in this area. Now on this outside, we see that we have decimals and fractions that do terminate and do repeat. And we're going to get into that, but we can see that the negative 120,000 belongs in this integer set. Well, you see this little word right here? All the numbers that are contained within these sets are called rational numbers. You know what I'm always saying about mathematicians and their spe special names. And the other, if they don't fit in here, they belong over here in the irrational side. So a rational number, the general definition is that it can be expressed in the form of A over B. Now A and B are just integers. So if you can take any integers and express them as this fraction, but B can't be zero. Remember, if we try and divide by zero, the planets start to go crazy, things might explode, and there's even some thoughts that we might start to lose brain cells. So we never divide by zero. So now that we know not to divide by zero, I just want to draw your attention to this funny little symbol. This funny little symbol that has an equal sign with a slash through it, that means does not equal. So that's telling us that B does not equal zero. So if you look at this A over B, it probably looks like something you've seen before. It looks a little bit like a fraction. So let's look at a graphical representation of what a rational number might look like. I have some rectangles and some of them are shaded and some of them are unshaded. So I could create a rational number to represent this picture. I have three unshaded rectangles and I have a total of five. So if I represent the number of unshaded rectangles to the number of total rectangles, I get three over five and three over five is a rational number. I could also represent this uh, picture by the shaded rectangles and the total number of rectangles. And that would be two over five, which is also a rational number. So now let's just in summary, let's talk about those numbers we started with. Do you remember me being the bank calling and saying that I was in debt $120,000? Where would that go in our rational chart? Well, it's a negative number. It doesn't matter the size, how big or how small. If it's negative, it's an integer. So a hundred, negative 120,000 would live in this area right here. What about the money that I was throwing out? For instance, 
I have a $10 bill. Now this is a Canadian $10 bill, so it looks a little weird, but it's $10 nonetheless in Canada. And where would that, that number live? Well, it's a positive number. And so it actually would live here in the natural number. Now remember, if it's a natural number, it's also a whole number, it's also an integer. And all of the numbers that are in this set, or you know, we represent this set in this picture, this Venn diagram, as a rectangular area. And that represents the entirety of the rational numbers. The rational numbers will live somewhere inside this rectangle. So I also have a quarter or a dime. Now a quarter, it's called a quarter, and the reason it's called a quarter is because it's one-fourth of a dollar. It takes four quarters to make a dollar. So if I have one, I have one-fourth. So if I have one-fourth, that's a fraction. And fractions live in this area on the outside of these circles. And last but not least, how many dimes are in a dollar? Well, we know there's 10 of them. So if I have one dime, it represents one-tenth of a dollar. So I have one-tenth, which is, again, it's a fraction, and it is also a rational number. So all of these numbers live inside of this picture in different spots, but they are all rational numbers. And that's our short lesson, Introduction to Rational Numbers.